And you also have a lot of scenes going on with you, Lori, who plays the worst man in the world. Yeah. How did how did that dynamic go for you as actors? Were you did you talk through things, or did you decide since you're antagonist that you should not? We talk to we talk to everything. Um, we still talk to everything. <laughs> um, no, working with Hugh was uh, extraordinary because he's been such a passionate defender of this story for so long. He loves it. It's one of his favorite novels of all time. And so he was a he was a champion. He was a keeper of the flame. And we all talk together all the time about about um, the intricacies of that relationship. But actually. The complexity of it is that they like each other so much that Roper and Pine are, in many ways, very similar. They share a sense of humor, they share a frame of reference, um, and they're drawn to each other and seduced by each other in some way, um, which makes that tension of antagonism much more nuanced. Um, and when, when to sort of to turn the dials in one direction or the other was something we just kind of calibrated every day. Do you want to ask that to Danny? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, um, Hugh Laurie wanted to buy the book when it came out. And actually, he wanted to play Jonathan Pine. And, um, I think you would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, 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 There's no way I could play Richard Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way to do this. Um, and, um, I think he, I think actually there was a, I mean, kind of pondering about that, and then other people got the film rights, and, and it was never made, and it was never made, most likely because it was never meant to be a feature film, but it should be a television series like we did it. Um, but um, I think part of that made, he has, he had reflected so much about the characters, but there was some kind of weird insight from him, which was incredibly um, inspiring and mm. interesting. There's also, I mean, he's also like a a, um, a quite um, art, like he he's full of surprises. Like about a week before we were going to start, he came and said, "No, he wasn't going to do it." And he had this long list of alternative <laughs> actors who he thought he way better. And, and, I, and I was on my own with him. Everybody else were on a, on a recce, and I was sitting on my own with you in this huge, big, like a top floor of a very big, empty building, which was the production office, where there normally are, are like 150 people. So it was him and me all on our own in this huge, big space with a list of alternative actors. And um, and I was like, um, Hugh, um, I don't think that's such a great idea. And he went on with other names, and I said, um, Look, you are right for it. And he, he then went home, and he came back, and we had dinner the next day, and it was fine. But I think that that's sort of there's a kind of constant search in him, a constant sort of trying to figure out what is right, which. Which, which you don't really, which is not really in the writing of the worst man in the world, but add that to, to very convincing writing of the worst man in the world, and you get someone who actually managed to be a real human being, um, in spite of actually being the worst man in the world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 